Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Mother of slain man happy, person of interest surrendered. The mother of a young man who was killed while attending a week is happy that a man named as a person of interest in the case has turned himself into the police. May thank God for justice. This kind of make me feel a little bit better, but this can bring back my son, Doreen Kergill told reporters. Her son, 23-year-old Darren Gale, was shot and killed in Anchor District, Wittorn in Westmoreland on June 24. A man who is from the same community surrendered to the police Sunday afternoon after being featured on the Police Wanted Wednesday's campaign on social media. According to a police source, he turned himself in about 5 p.m. He was accompanied by his attorney. He will be charged soon, the police source disclosed. Gale's mother said her son was an innocent victim. Right and now, every time I look for my son's picture, me know to God, him no do nothing. Me know to God, him and the man who surrendered, no in a nothing, the distraught woman said. Ex-convict gone down in Falmouth. Sleuths from the Criminal Investigations Branch, CIB in Trelawney, have commenced their investigation into Friday night's fatal shooting of an ex-convict by an unknown assailant in the parish capital, Falmouth. The police have identified the deceased as 29-year-old Ryan Scott of a Falmouth address. Reports are that about 9.45 p.m., Scott was standing at a business establishment along Water Lane in Falmouth when he was pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened fire hitting him. Scott was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigators are yet to establish a motive behind the shooting. St. Anne Pool attendant dies from bizarre crash in Trelawney. A pool attendant lost his life as a result of a bizarre crash in which he was thrown from his car, which overturned and dropped on him in Trelawney on Thursday afternoon. The deceased has been identified as 32-year-old Chevy Skitten of Buckfield in St. Anne. Reports are that about 3.40 p.m., Gettin was driving a Honda Accord motor car along the Coral Spring Roadway when he reported the lost control of the vehicle, which crashed into an embankment and overturned. Gotten suffered several injuries and was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The Duncan's police are investigating the incident. Highway 2000 toll rates to go up to July 9. Motorists who use Highway 2000 will pay increased toll rates effective Saturday, July 9. At the same time, the operators will offer discount rates for Class 1 and Class 2 TTA customers who use the Portmore toll road. It was noted that the discounts will be applied in the form of rebates within two hours after passage. Additionally, frequent users regard are also applicable for Class 1 and Class 2 TTA customers at Portmore and Spanish Town. Drivers will get back the full value of their tent trip every week, making it free. They will also get a rebate of 10% for each trip within that week. The upcoming toll rates are Portmore Toll Plaza Class 1, current rate $290, new rate $340, T-Tag discount rate $320. Class 2, current rate $470, new rate $550, T-Tag discount rate $520. Class 3, current rate $870, new rate $1020. Spanish Town Toll Plaza, class 1, current rate 210 New rate $240. Class 2 current rate $320. New rate $370. Class 3 current rate $590. New rate $680. Vineyard Toll Plaza. Class 1 current rate $550. New rate $600. Class 2 current rate $810. New rate $900. Class 3 current rate $1,510, new rate $1,800. Maypen Toll Plaza, Class 1 current rate $150, new rate $190. Class 2 current rate $250, new rate $300. Class 3 current rate $500, new rate $570. NCU Theology Student Dice Officiating Aunt's Funeral Ministerial student Kevar Brown has just one semester left to complete his degree at Northern Caribbean University, NCU, and the man of God had a bright future ahead. The ninth of ten children, he would have been the first person in his family 
to graduate from university. However, everything changed abruptly on Father's Day when Brown collapsed at the pulpit while officiating at the funeral service for his beloved aunt, Carlin Brown. He died on the way to the hospital from what the autopsy report revealed was a heart attack. His sister, Maxine Davis, was among the mourners inside the Orange Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church in Portland when the events unfold, and it was in her lap that Brown took his last breath. Davis and her brother were best friends, and although she had several clips of him preaching, Father's Day would have been the first time she would see him preach live. My brother went up to the pulpit and said, I have done many funerals in different places and countries, but this is the most difficult one for me. After that, I see my brother put his head on the pulpit like he was resting, and I said, Kevar tired. But then, him hold up him head, and I see him eye them roll over. I rushed to the pulpit and helped the other people to take him off the tail and pull him short. Then I hear him groan, and I knew that we had to get him to the hospital at once, Davis shared. She recalled the moment when the doctors pronounced Brown dead and covered him with a white sheet. Me ball out. You could have hear me from here to Jerusalem. Me lift up the sheet a thousand times. Me lift up in dead hand and using dead finger. He open him phone and go in him WhatsApp. She also recalled the last smile she saw with Kevar when he looked inside the church and saw her just as he was getting ready to take the pulpit. My brother was a loving boy, Davis said emotionally. Kevar was a family person. Me and my brother talk about anything and everything. My brother was a people person and was a devoted Christian. It's when him dead, me realize how much people all over the world did love Kevar. According to Davis, Brown's father died last year, and he was the one who buried him. But he didn't officiate at that funeral. Afterwards, he traveled overseas to work and pay off his school fees instead of finishing what would have been his last semester. She applauded him for his journey, which saw him leaving high school without any Caribbean secondary education certificate subjects, working as a security guard, and then telling his family that his real goal in life was to attend university. Kevra would have left Portland, go to Carnation Market to Coconut, sell them off, and then head to school in Mandeville, and nobody knew. Davis shared. Another income earner for the 33-year-old theology major was overseas mission trips. Damien Chambers, assistant professor, School of Theology, NCU, taught Kevar and described him as friendly, jovial, with a very outgoing personality. Kevar was a very avid reader and a trained student who faced a lot of challenges. To help pay his school fees, he would travel overseas to do canvassing, and when he did crusades, he would also get a little stipend. It is sad that he died, but based on his trajectory, there is a lot of hope. He was a spiritual leader for his family, challenging them about God, and one family member has already decided to give her life to the Lord because she wants to see Kevar again. Chambers told family and religion, adding that this is the first time a student from the faculty has died in such a manner. He has visited with the family and offered counseling. Davis hoped that Brown would have lived to graduate from university. However, her last words were, Me na question God. God take the best and Kevra was the best one out of all ten away. My mother in Florida talked to Kevra this Saturday night and she tell him that she have this heavenly spanner. It persisted until Sunday and she never go to church. And she said that when she get the call that Kevra did, she just feel light. It's like she didn't know. Brown, she noted, had even experienced an undiagnosed illness earlier in his life. In the year 2019 interview, with family and religion that it made him become like a 99-year-old man in strength and sight, and sure that he promised God that if he restored his health, he would serve him all his life he kept his promise. Tufton Hills Healthcare Workers as he was Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton is hailing the nation's over 25,000 healthcare workers as he was, who continue to give dedicated service in advancing healthcare in Jamaica. The minister was addressing a Thanksgiving service to mark Healthcare Workers Appreciation Month at the Boulevard Baptist Church in Kingston on Sunday. He told the healthcare workers in attendance that their sacrifices have not gone unnoticed, while noting that they continue to care for the people of Jamaica even while dealing with personal challenges. Dr. Tufton said all categories of workers, including 
doctors, nurses, Porter's data entry clerk, and community health aides have demonstrated their commitment and resilience. In the process, you have blazed a trail of excellence in public health, saving lives while helping to preserve families and livelihoods. Today, we proudly salute you, our healthcare heroes, he said. Dr. Tufton implored the workers to take time to enjoy the various activities planned for them during the month-long celebrations. Healthcare Workers Appreciation Month recognizes physicians, nurses, technicians, administrators, and other healthcare professionals and support staff who provide essential services and products across the island and through their efforts continue to save lives. The health sector has been at the forefront of the development and implementation of strategies and projects to mitigate the impact of diseases on the Jamaican population, including the coronavirus COVID-19. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.